Okay, welcome back. Uh, I'm now answering question number nine from the specimen paper, um, paper four for the new 2020 syllabus. And um, it's a question here, it looks like it's about trigonometry. The diagram shows a trapezium A, B, C, D. Uh, a, B is parallel to D, C, that's what these arrows there are for. A, B, 55, B, D is 70. Um, a, B, D is 40 degrees and the angle B, C, D is 32 degrees. All of them are marked calculate the length of AD. So here we have to find this length. Let me call this X for now. We need to find this length. Now we know that when you see a situation like this, you have a non-right angle triangle. So you cannot use Pythagoras' theorem here. It has to be a right angle triangle. All right. So even if something looks like it's right angle, but you don't know that it's right angle, you cannot use Pythagoras' theorem on that. Okay. Um, so you got to use um, one of the non-right angle triangle methods which are the sine and the cosine rules. Now, the sine rule can't be used here because we need two pairs of opposites. So, for example, if I wanted to find this side, I would have to know at least another one of these two angles. Then I could use these two together, and then one of these is unknown. We would be able to find um, this unknown. So, you can't use a sine rule here. This is a classic case of using the cosine rule. The only case that you'll find when you're trying to find a length for using the cosine rule is when you know two of the other lengths, and you know the angle between those two lengths, and it's that side opposite the angle that you know is the side you're trying to find. So you have to know the cosine rule. It's not being going to be given to you in the question. So you have to know it. And the formula that people memorize is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Now people memorize this formula in different ways. Okay, they change the letters around and stuff like that. I don't really like to do that. I like to memorize the concept. Or think about the concept here. So basically the A squared, the A here, that's the subject, and the angle A are opposites. So this is the, this is the A in our formula, what we have to find. And of course this is the angle, 40 degrees. They, they have to be opposites. And the B and C can be any of the other two sides. It doesn't make, matter which one it is, as long as this is your A. So what we can do is we can say, okay, X squared is equal to, in fact, we can just do this in one step. We can say X equals... As long as you have this written down, I mean, if you write down the formula here and you don't apply it properly, you won't get any marks. They want to see the formula applied. Whether you write the formula or not, it doesn't make any difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as all under the square root. And you're going to have b squared, which is either 55 or 70. It's up to you. I'll just put 55. 55 squared plus 70 squared minus, and then you've got 2 times 55 times 70 times the cosine of the angle between them, which is 40 degrees. Okay, now, be very careful here not to do this calculation um, uh, un incorrectly. This is bit mass here. So you cannot, for example, subtract 2 times 55 times 70 from this number here and then multiply by cosine 40. This is like a product that you have to find and then subtract from this. So that kind of makes it clearer. Your calculator will automatically do it properly. Some people, they do that. They add these together, together and they take away 2 times 55 times 70. And, and they think they can take that away without multiplying it with a cosine 40. And then they multiply cosine 40 at the end. And that's wrong because multiplication comes before subtraction. So we've got the square root of 55 squared. Whoops, 55 squared plus 70 squared. 70 squared minus... 2 times 55, you can put it in brackets just like times, times 70, and times cosine of 40. Now I'm making sure that the, uh, the calculator is in degree mode. Whoops, what did I do there? Hold on. Uh, 2, sorry, 2 angle input. Degree mode one. Okay, so I'm just making sure because I'm using um, I'm using uh, trigonometry. I'm using cosine, so I have to tell the calculator that what I put in there is in degrees. Okay, because there's other ways of expressing angles. Anyway, you press the answer. You press the equal button. The square root is already there, so I've already taken the square root. So x equals forty five point zero one six. So x equals forty five point zero one six. Oops. 016.61, be careful, 016. And it continues on like that. 
Now they didn't tell us how to round the answer, so we need to round to three significant figures. So you should write 45.0. And the meters is already there for us. Now what I'm going to do, in case I need to use that length again, I'm going to do something quite neat here. I'm going to store, so I'll press this button here, store as A. So I'm going to, I'm going to press this button here. The, the A is going to be there. So I've stored the answer and under this A. And if I want to take the if I want to take it back, I'm going to press recall. I shift and this button recall, and then I press that button, and it will bring me that answer. So that's stored in the memory. So if, in case I need to use it again. Okay. Now, part B says calculate BC. Now BC is basically this length over here. Let me call it Y. This is BC. All right. So we want to find what this length BC is. Okay. Um, now what do we have here? Okay, we know that uh, these two are parallel. So I know that this is 40. So you see now, you got to use your, your understanding here. Because right now, when you look at it at first, you think, okay, I know this side. I know this side. Now, to find this side, I need to know what this angle is because then I can use the sine rule. Y over sine of this angle equals 70 over sine of 32. And at first sight, it doesn't look like we know what the angle is. And this is how you should think as a... Uh, when you're in an exam and as a mathematician this is how you think problem solve you think okay all right i don't know what I, ha, this is going to solve my problem if i find this angle i can use the sine rule i don't have this angle okay then if you think back to what they told us in the question they told us it's a trapezium now why did they tell us it's a trapezium why did they tell us that a b and c d are parallel to each other why okay and of course they told us that for a reason so if you look very carefully you can see that these are a pair of alternate angle so this angle must be 40 degrees now we have the information we need to continue and find the angle y so what i'm going to do and i'll pause it while i do it just bring that down here so we can see okay so now i've brought this diagram down so we can see what's happening in the space here so we were dealing with this we're trying to find bc now we have this triangle here where we have pairs of opposites so i can say y over sine 40 so the sine rule states that side over the sine of the angle opposite that side is Going to give you the same ratio as another side in the triangle Divided by the sine of the angle opposite that side So y divided by sine 40 will give me the same ratio as 70 over sine 32 Okay, I could write them the other way around upside down, but I like to keep the unknown on top so if I'm trying to find an angle I would put sine x over the length equals sine whatever over the other length but I'm finding a side I'll put y over sine of the angle that makes it a bit easier to cross multiply that's all so you got 70 times sine 40 over the sine of 32 and that will give us our answer for the next part so you got 70 70 sine 40 um, divided by the sine of 32. Now we already changed it to degree mode, so we're okay there. And that will give us the length y, 84.909, 84.909. And I'm going to also store this, but this time as b, in case I need it again. So 84.909, 84.909. So if you round this to 3SF, which you're supposed to, if there's no instructions, it's not exact. You get 84.9 meters, and that's the answer to part B. That's A, B, and now we're going to go on to part C. Okay, so part C says calculate the area of A, B, C, D. You've got to calculate the area of the whole of the shape, A, B, C, D. Now, this shape is a trapezium. Um, to find the area of a trapezium, you need the vertical height, which I guess you could find it if you wanted to. But then we've also got to find the length CD. So the easiest way of, of dealing with this particular problem is to find the area of this triangle and find the area of this triangle. And to find the area of a triangle when it's not a right angle triangle, we, we have a formula, the area equals a half times AB sine C, where it's kind of like the cosine rule in terms of its concept. You have two sides and the angle between those two sides. So for example, for triangle one here, I'll do a half times 70 times 55 times the sine of 40 that will give me the area of this triangle so number one is sorted that's fine number two it's um you got to think a little bit now the easiest thing would be is if i 
use the sides that I know, which is Y. Okay, if I if you don't remember what Y is, we can it's 84.909. So I've got it 84. Whoops, 84.909. 84.909. That looks like 89. There, one second. That Y is stuck. Okay, 84.909. Dot dot dot. That's the length of Y. Okay, so. I know this length and I know this length is 70. Now, if I were to know this angle, okay, then I'll be able to find it. And I can find it. I do, I do know what this angle is because um, I can work out what this angle is in, in two separate ways. One of them is doing 40 plus 32 taken away from 180 because this angle is in a triangle. And the other one is the fact that these are interior angles that 32 plus 40 plus this add up to 180, as we know from here anyway. So there's two ways of thinking about it interior angles or angles in the triangle so basically i know that this angle here okay the angle dbc i'll put i'll put, put that here dbc is equal to 180 minus the sum of 40 plus 32 which is 180 minus 72 which is 108 degrees okay so this is 108 degrees okay and we can just then use um our formula so I'm actually going to use this here so I'll, I'll 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 find the area of this triangle first so I've got a half times 70 times 84.909 times the sine of 108 that's the two sides and the angle between them okay plus a half times you got 70 times 55 times the sine of 40 and that will give me the area required so I'll just use this so I'll have a half times 70 times my answer that we had last which was 84.909 times sine of 108 plus you're gonna have a half which is 0 0.5 times 70 times 55 times the sine of 40 degrees and that should give us the answer which is 4063.74 the 4063.74 4 it doesn't tell us how to round it so we should round it to three significant figures so you should write it as 4060 because this continued on and on so three significant figures that's 4060 meters squared and then the next part of the question um again i'll bring the diagram okay so now calculate the shortest distance from a to bd now here's a and here's bd the shortest distance between a point and a straight line is going to be the perpendicular distance see these will all be longer a to BD, A to BD, A to BD. This is all A to BD. The shortest distance is when it meets it at 90 degrees. Okay, the perpendicular distance. Okay, there's a numerous ways we can do this. Okay, we could use, for example, this triangle here. We could do that if you want. We could say that um, that's the opposite. Okay, this, let's call this, um, for example, Z. The side Z is opposite 40 degrees. Um, this is a right angle triangle. We could use so katoa. This is the uh, hypotenuse. We could say the sine of 40 is equal to z over 55, opposite over hypotenuse. So z is equal to 55 times the sine of 40. This is probably the easiest way to do this, this particular question. So you've got 55 times the sine of 40 degrees, which gives us 35.353. So that's 35.353. So that's going to give you 35.4 meters as the shortest distance from A to BD. Okay, we could have also done it another way. We could have said we, if we know the area of this uh, triangle, which would be that part here, uh, sorry, that second part here, a half times 70 times 55 times sine 40. Um, the area of that triangle is equal to the half times 70 times z. So half times 70 times z will equal this. And the only thing you don't know is the z, which is the vertical height. And you can find it. But this, I think, is easier in this particular case. 
And there's the answer to part D. And I think that was the end of the question. Yes, it is. Okay, so we'll end the video there. Thank you for, for watching. Um, by the way, up here will appear the playlist for the rest of the paper. Over here will, play, will appear the playlist for trigonometry. Subscribe button will be somewhere over here. And if you want to look at the paper 2 playlist, there will be a card at the top that you can click and it will show up. Okay, so thank you for watching and see you in the next video.